Yes, you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people just like you who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? As a content creator and entrepreneur, more than anything else, I value being able to communicate and update my audience, not just about the latest products and services that I'm launching, but also about personal stories, advice, and the tools that make life so much better. One of the tools that I've been using for years is Flowdesk. It's an intuitive platform that helps me design beautiful and professional looking emails, newsletters, welcome offers, sales announcements, and so much more. Honestly, it's the number one tool that I use to help me grow any business, engage my audience, and share more about new product launches that I have before anyone else knows. So whether you're a small business, a content creator, or someone who wants to start building their brand or sharing their voice with their audience, using Flowdesk will change everything for you and help you deliver a consistent email and sales experience without having to use so many different tools. I've been using Flowdesk for a while now, and I've partnered with them as an affiliate. Use my link in the show description below to try Flowdesk for free and get a 50% discount on your first year after your trial is up. Hey, hey, any youngers, it's me, your host, Jen Glantz, back with another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. I'm sitting here recording this in my bed for a couple of reasons. Let me explain why. As I mentioned in the last episode, I have a newborn who is only about less than two months old, and Before she arrived in the world, we had to redecorate this apartment because we live in a 500 square foot, one bedroom apartment in Brooklyn, New York. I love my neighborhood so much. We live in Williamsburg and I love this apartment so much. But the truth is it didn't even fit me, Adam and Goofy before we had a baby. And now it fits me, Adam, Goofy and a baby. And that is just like way too small. Plus we both work from home. Plus we just have so much stuff. So before the baby came, we had to consolidate. And in order for the baby to have a place to sleep, like a crib, a bassinet, I had to give up my desk because my desk is in the bedroom, Adam's desk is in the living room. So I had to let mine go, which is fine because the truth is I barely used it except for like Zoom calls, podcast recordings, things where I needed to be in a room with the door closed. For the most part, I worked from our kitchen table, I worked from the couch, I worked from a coffee shop. But now when I had to give up the desk, one of us can be in the living room talking at a time and Adam has the kind of job where he is on Zoom calls like all day long. So for me to record this podcast, for me to do Zoom calls, for me to even just have like a moment to think, I have to come in the room and work from the bed, which is not a big deal. The second reason I'm in the bed is because if you remember, if you were like an OG listener, you remember all the times when I would try to record the podcast episode and like Goofy would be barking in the background. I'd have to like stop or she would just be looking at me like, what are you doing? But now that I have a baby who's also crying in the background, I have very limited amount of time during the day when I can record this. So right now she's sleeping. That might change, but that is why I'm recording this from the bed. The past few months of having a newborn have definitely been a whirlwind. Yes, they've been very tiring. You know, everyone prepares you for that part of motherhood. They're like, you're never going to sleep ever again. And the first couple months with a newborn, you're never going to sleep. And to be honest with you, like sleep isn't the the hardest part of this adventure because at least you knew that going into it, right? You're like, I know that I'm not going to sleep at night. So you know that, right? The other tough parts of being a new mom are all the things you didn't plan for. Like when the baby is doing something different and you're like, oh my God, is the baby okay? I don't know what this means. Or like the other day her like skin turned a certain color or she had like a bump on her head and I was like, oh my God, let's go to the pediatrician right now. Like there's things like that that are hard because you're not prepared for them and you don't know what to do and you don't know what's going on. Let me tell you the type of anxiety I had when we gave her a bath for the first time because I was like, 
what are we going to do? Are we going to, is this going to hurt her? Like that stuff is the hard part. The sleep is just warranted. You know, to expect it every single night when I put my head to the pillow, I say to Adam, I'm like, Hey dude, I'll see you in like an hour or so. It's like our joke, right? Cause we know we're not going to sleep through the night. And some nights we don't even sleep more than a couple of hours and that is okay. Um, the best part about the journey in the past couple of months has definitely been just like seeing the baby grow. You don't think like after you have the baby, you're like, oh, you're going to be this way forever. Your mind cannot conceptualize the fact that like this baby is going to grow into a human being. I personally still can't wrap my head around the fact that like she will one day be a teenager. I can't, I feel like I'm a teenager. How is she going to be a teenager? So it was really tough, but also like beautiful in the past month, she grew out of her newborn clothes, like newborn clothes go up to size like seven or uh, seven or eight pounds. And she grew out of them and I had to take them out of the drawer and replace them with zero to three month size clothing. And that was really hard because I was like, oh my God, I think she's like growing out of the newborn phase. We're never going to get this back. And I just want to make sure that I'm soaking in all of these memories because you can't go backward in life with people, with growth, with anything. So that was like a beautiful thing of like, oh, she's growing and we're seeing this, but also like so weird because she's not going to be my baby forever. And that is like super hard to wrap your head around. The other day, Adam said something really cute to her that like really stuck with me. He was like, he said to her, he's like, it's so crazy. Like you and I will know each other hopefully for like my entire life. And it's so true, right? Like it's just so true. You have this like human that you brought into the world that you're just going to get to know and be with for your your whole life or at least you hope and there was something just so beautiful in those words every time I feel stressed overwhelmed upset that I just have so much to do and not enough time to do it I think about the fact that you know this life is short and regardless of how many emails are in your inbox life is best spent with the people you spend it with and I'm trying to spend a lot of time with her Today's episode is all about how to be more likable. So a lot of times when we're talking about networking or friendship, we think so much about ourselves and the impression that we're giving off and whether the person that we're with likes us. I had this goal of the year that I wanted to get better at being around people without having any intentions except to get to know them and build relationships with them. So I picked up that book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I had never, ever read it before. But I was like, you know what? I want to learn how just to like be around new people, especially in this new phase of my life. Like I want to meet all new mom friends and things like that. I want to learn how to just make friends faster without having any intentions, without interrupting conversations. Just I want to be more of a magnet when I meet people. So I read the book and the book shares 30 different principles around how to make people like you more, influence their way of thinking and just be a better leader if you're in like a leadership role. After finishing the book, I started to put some of the main points into play, and I'm going to share with you what I learned. So point number one is about listening rather than talking and how that makes people like you more. So oftentimes, but I don't know about you, but when I'm having a conversation with someone, I fear that I'll run out of things to say or I'll sound boring. So in the past, I used to spend hours preparing for networking events, parties, writing down stories I could tell, rehearsing them out loud, having questions to share when I got to the party. But in the book, one of the things that made me realize my approach is wrong is that rather than being in a conversation and fishing for things to talk about, it's best to be there fully present and get to the get the other person to talk about themselves. So if you ask people questions about what's going on in their lives, they usually walk away feeling like they had a positive reaction with you. That's because people are more interested sometimes in their selves, their wants, their problems more than anything else, which isn't a bad thing, right? But oftentimes in conversation, we're so worried about the stories we're going to tell or how we sound when we speak. But rather than do that, we should worry more about the questions that we're going to ask people. So rather than approaching conversations by having a list of questions I'm going to ask, I try to approach approach conversations by being present and listening to what people have to say. And rather than responding with a personal story or something about me, I always like to respond with the question. And I've noticed that that's helped me be better at conversations, whether or not it's helped people like me more, it's helped me be better, memorable, and also it just helped me have a stronger conversation with that person. 
Number two, dramatizing my ideas to get people's attention. So this is more business than friendship, but when I'm trying to land a new client or I get on a sales call with a brand, and rather than show them a PowerPoint about my credibility and my services, because those things are not gonna stick, one of the things the book mentions is to dramatize our ideas. In addition to sharing the truth, our credibility, what we offer, the book recommends making it vivid, interesting, dramatic, and colorful. The way you say it, say it in a more memorable kind of way. So even if you're at work right now and you're trying to figure out how to like ask your boss for a raise or you're about to give a presentation or you have to speak on a call, in addition to sharing all the things you have to share, find ways to make them more interesting, more colorful, use metaphors, compare them to things, add more interesting language in how you share what you're sharing, things like that. Number three, encouragement can be really motivating. So oftentimes, one of the services I offer, it's a very popular part of my business, is coaching individuals on their own goals, their own side hustles, things like that. And in the book, it says when you want to motivate someone to achieve their goals, rather than tell them that's going to be hard and the odds are not in their favor, instead do the opposite. Encourage them to take small steps forward and then celebrate those things along the way. Oftentimes I work with people who have like really big goals. They want to quit their career in a field they've been in for 20 years and do something completely different that they have no experience in. And I will never say to them like, hey, that's not going to happen. Or if someone's like, I want to start this business and I personally know how hard it is to start that business, I'm never going to tell someone, don't do it. But instead, as their coach, I'm going to say, okay, we can make this happen. Here's the first three steps you have to take. Here's exactly how you have to take them. And then after they take those steps, we celebrate that. And that is a better way of motivating a person than just saying, never going to happen, never going to work, try something else. And this also applies to how we talk to ourselves. If there's things that we want to do, rather than talking ourselves out of it, saying it's impossible, we should instead say, okay, what are the ways that we can motivate ourselves and then celebrate ourselves afterward? Anyway, I'm going to just stop there. Those are my three takeaways from the book. One of them was about conversations, which applies in friendship or meeting new people. The second one is about how we approach situations at work. And the third one is just a great self-motivation way or just a great way to motivate the people around you. All in all, I liked the book. I don't think you have to buy it. I think you could read like the spark notes online. But if it, you want to have a book on hand that will just help you be better at making friends, better at your job and things like that, I do say it is a great book to pick up. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz. Hey you, thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review that you're not getting any younger podcasts on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen too. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group, where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives, for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.